Ladies and gentlemen, the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. On with the show. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Turn Right Machine Works. My name is Keith, and we're in here at this slightly modified flat spot. All right, we're going to take the K&T table and we're just going to use it as a little bench. We're going to be ripping apart this steering hydraulic cylinder in a minute. And that's what we're going to do as far as this video is to tear this apart and uh, inspect it and get what we need to restore it or repair it on order so it can come back in here and we can get the thing back to the customer in working condition. Just uh, just today, I got a uh, really nice note sent to me. Dear Mr. Finner, I'd like to comment on your patriotic intro on your latest videos. Thank you. Bob Finley, U.S. Navy um, Seabees, Mobile Construction Battalion 10, MCB 10. Vietnam, 68, 69, and 70. And uh, he's also the one that sent me the little hammer, I believe, that I use here. I set it on the press. This took me a little while because he saw me beating my hands on an Allen ranch or, or you know, and, and I have. And my hands, my hands look like machine shop warrior hands. Two per ten inch contracture started coming in, but that that really kind of stopped after I quit drinking ten years ago and quit smoking nine little almost ten years ago as well. And since I stopped those two things, that two per ten inch contracture uh, has has just stopped where it is. I don't have any less, but I don't have any more. Uh, just a little note on that. Anyway, it took me a little while to get used to this, and I use it quite often now, and I do. And I and it's it, you. At first, I wanted to like swing it like that all the time, but actually, I just get it like this, and you know, it is that fist like you're pounding something, and and uh, it does the job. I want to thank you very much, Bob. I also want to thank you in another way. I have, I have another new surprise coming on as well, and I'm going to be sending one of these uh, your way as well, Bob. But. I, a week ago or so, I was, I was contacted by uh, Terry Faulkner out in uh, Missouri. And um, he was contacting me to see if I couldn't help out uh, with the vets in his area. His area there, he has the Jefferson Barracks Division from the Department of Veterans Affairs. And he's pertaining to uh, two buildings of, of um, personnel there in uh, building 51 and 52. So you got the uh, mental health and the spinal cord injury. And he asked if I could do something. And, uh, you know, I thought about it for a couple of days and everything else. And I thought I wanted to do something a little bit more than just sending uh, uh, my patriotic attitude sticker and what I did is I created a patriotic attitude keychain and I took and I engraved that image that's on these stickers and I'm gonna send a sticker along as well because of the color and this it, not all of them might be driving or whatever but this is a tag you can put it on whatever you want and um, so I got and I it took a little while to you, when you see something in color, it's different than when you every media medium that you change and you change your artwork, whatever it is, you you got to change it so that that same appearance comes out there. My original sculpture on the wall had it. And then I created the stickers, and now I'm creating these. Now these, and also too, I put in everybody's input. I take it to stride, and I actually got the. Uh, the vibrator coming along with the uh, stones in it and um, 
uh, I'm, I'm getting a knack of that and they really do have a nice feel they have a satin finish on them really nice on the back I have thank you thank you for your services little because some people get a little mix up I graduated high school in 75 and it just ended the um, the draft and the registration started in that air right there and I had a couple avenues that I wanted to go I actually majored art and I wanted to have my own sign painting business and everything else but through my father-in-law I I got my foot in the door at AAA South Shipbuilding San Diego California I entered as a helper and 15 years after I entered as a helper working for multiple companies working aboard almost every single ship at 32nd Street Naval Station North Island and Point Loma minus nuclear subs and minus a couple other nuclear vessels my most favorite ones I worked North Island and I love the three carriers the Constellation the Kitty Hawk and the Ranger I worked those a lot but I also had time on the LPHs Okinawa and New Orleans and I had you know the uh, LPH and LSTs, Tuscaloosa and Racine. And there's many ships that bring back memories. One little short story here before we get going. I don't want to drag this too much out, but I do want to share a little bit about myself, how I my career, how I got started. And this is I know this is the same as being on the oil field with the roughnecks or wherever you're at. But and the reason why I have so much respect for uh, veterans as well, and everybody's going to patriotic, you know, how, how does this all of a sudden come out? It hasn't. It has been there all the time. My most two favorite days were the very first day that I was ever had my own badge, and I was actually allowed on a military base. And my second favorite day was being back here working my own business and then being called by my former employer and meeting up with a team member and going down to the sub base in Virginia Beach and getting back onto the beach for another week. Two favorite di times in, in my career. All right. And of course I haven't been there in a long time, but I did almost 15 and a half years straight naval ship repair top to bottom I've worked on just about anything that's where my versatility comes from and when I started as a helper I was working for a journeyman and those journeymen were all veterans 99.9% .9 of the journeymen that I worked underneath when I started in the shipyards and learned in my trade were veterans. So I am making a hundred of these keychains and I'm going to send them down to uh, Terry Faulkner and he is going to take them and a and hundred stickers and he is going to go and share with the veterans at uh, Jefferson's Barrack Division in Missouri. And, uh, you know, it's just something kind of special I wanted to, to share with you as well. I'm also going to have these on my um, website as well. I'm not sure where I'm going to place them yet. They'll probably be... Um, uh, they'll probably be on the uh, the artwork page, but I'm not sure yet. I'll, I'll announce it when I do get it set up there. <clears throat> also, these are still going like hotcakes. And I've been asked <laughs> to make... <laughs> okay, we have this size. And actually, there's already a, several of these have gone out because I posted this on my Facebook already. These are on the um, website, and they're on my swag rack. 
and uh, you can get these. I actually went down to the post office and I have special envelopes to, to put these in so they go through the mail and it's kind of like, uh, uh, it, it lets me hold down the price um, because I didn't want to have a, a, a $20 uh, plus um, uh, price on, on, on a sticker. So I was able to hold these down in a reasonable price. All right. And uh, anyway, so the, the envelope they go in is they're made because that, that when they process that part of the mail, it goes around rollers and stuff like that. But at least it won't come in kink. If anybody's ever damaged one, they can send a damaged one back and I'll replace it uh, absolutely um, at, at my cost. Um, so no worries there. All right. There's a little sharing. And uh, I do have a Mother's Day sculpture that I have online now it's on my website at the end of the video I will uh, give you a, a, a quick view on that and I can ship those out two days shipping so you can still get one in before Mother's Day all right let me set that aside here and let's uh let's get on with this I got sidetracked there very easy I get sidetracked a lot um uh one, uh, nothing health related. All right. I just went through my heart, uh, heart doctor, uh, last week or whatever. And she's pleased that I have dropped from 220 to, uh, 180 since January. I am wearing 32 pants again. I haven't worn 32 pants in seven, eight years. And, uh, the, the ticker's going pretty good. And so I'm in, I'm in good shape right now. So, um, that, that's good news there. But I did get sidetracked on on the story about the um, the veterans when I was a, a helper my my first day my first day at, at work and uh, and of course my eyes were big and I'm staring out we we AAA South had bluebird buses but they were they were painted hunter green okay so we're re, we're driving in hunter green bluebird buses and uh and they still got the the rounded backs and and uh and the ugly pleather or whatever you want to call it that was on there and um but the back of the seat was still blue bird and it still was still that light colored blue and uh so we're riding and of course when i got on the bus i was told what ship to get off of but by the time we got down to the base and which is not is you know a mile and a half away those uh so-called friends that uh all became very very good friends um had me screwed up and uh and i got off at the wrong boat so i spent my first day on the wrong boat um and actually, they, they, they got me off on a floating dry dock, which is the San Onofre. And I worked on it several times in my career over the years, uh, several different companies. But uh, I still remember that. And I was supposed to be on the Durham. Durham was a cargo ship. And uh, the next day, I did get over it. And, and of course, my very first job was uh, going up and assisting, assisting the journeyman. And I remember the first journeyman I was put with, Frank. And... Uh, and he wasn't keen on the heights, and uh, you can hear the other, <laughs> the other veterans <laughs> are yelling at them too. <laughs> Frank, you got a nosebleed yet? You know that they were, they. Uh, but I at that at that age, and and uh, shoot, I was I was I already been hang gliding and everything else, so I didn't have really uh, uh, a fear of falling. You know, it's it's always that sudden stop, but. Uh, uh, I got up to the the top of that king post there, and we're we're working on those shivs up there at the top. And uh, of course, we got riggers that are doing everything else, so uh, you know we're not worried about dropping stuff and stuff like that. But I stared across from that king post, and I could swear that I was as tall as the Coronado Bay Bridge. It was like a straight across view of that beautiful day. You know, good memories from that. Um, that's that's where I came from and that's you know those those days and and of course that that was many initiations along the way and uh you know you only get that 
you get you get that treatment from those that that uh, respect you and that that respect actually it, it took a while it took a while for me to cut my hair that was down to here and uh, cut it and combed it straight back and 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 went to nothing but uh, the rasm from the vets and um, being down in a in a in a boiler room with 600 and 1200 pound steam systems and uh, that that long hair didn't take long to come off of there and after that the respect um, was just that much more and that's where my career took off all right we're gonna tear apart this. we're gonna take out these um, secure plugs that the customer put in here for us and I have a request that anything that comes in here does not leak or goo or uh, create a unnecessary oil or grease mess. Um, other than that, you know, this is this is in pretty good shape right here. This is this is how I like to receive work. At least I don't I don't want to start off getting. Uh, I don't have a solvent tank here. I have a special zoning allowance to have my shop here on 28 on Cape Cod. I'm not over in an industrial park and uh, things like that. So uh, that's kind of why I actually have that. And it's been successful since January 3rd of 97. All right, we're getting ready to take this apart. And I just want to go over a few tools that you do not need with hydraulics. You do not need this to take that cylinder apart. You do not need these, although it looks like somebody thought they should. You don't need these on this job. You don't really need this on this job. And back the very first video I ever showed, we were working on something over here. And I showed, if this is your only tool, we can help you out. All right. That's not needed on this job. Okay. What is going to be needed is a three-quarter inch wrench so we can do those. nine sixteenths wrench for that. This is already loose off of the end. And I think we might need a plastic mallet in case we want to tap anything loose. The very first thing before I pull this apart, because I want to just make sure that the alignment and everything else stays exactly the same. The very first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take a picture of it. It's actually one of the things that the phone's really good for. And one thing that's nice about photos and everything else is not necessarily that these ports are facing up or whatever, but also the barrel and any imperfections or scratches or things like that when you take something apart you could still identify if you zoom in and you can identify on that part one way or another where its location is okay another the old habit and especially in the yards the very first thing whenever you're taking something apart was to match mark it okay so I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna go ahead and put a couple identifying punch marks on the areas that split and I'm going to go ahead and put one here and one here. And we know that those are in line. All right. And that one will match the cylinder. So we don't need to hit that cylinder with any more than that. And that's basic parts right there that we're going to be pulling apart. What we want to do and what was happened was a grab with one of those tools on here and then trying to break loose the old rod in and it created a dig in here and then this went and traveled its stroke and this went under the outside is a wiper the wiper is basically to just wipe and keep everything clean off of this nice polished if it's heavy equipment it'd be chrome and this this is a marine cylinder this is a piece of of stainless steel so polished stainless steel and it just that it keeps the debris and the grit and everything else from getting in 
underneath your rubber seal. The rubber seals work perfectly fine unless something gets embedded or rolls underneath it and then they'll, they'll fail. You can get old and rot and wear out from heat. And you, there's a lot of reasons why you need to re, reseal or reservice your, your cylinder. But it doesn't need to be because of um, pecker tracks traveling through your rubbers. How do you like that one? All right, now we're gonna go ahead and first we're gonna pull this this end off here, and sometimes the guys will pull that out of there and they go, well, "I pulled the bolt out. How how is how is that still in there?" And what it is, there's a, a there's a half fifty fifty uh, pin that goes in here. And the bolt actually holds the two pieces together. So if you pull your rod end out here, okay, I'm going to move the camera in a little bit more so you can actually see a little bit more of what I'm talking about instead of the overall picture. All right, so we pulled the bolt out, but we didn't have to pull it all the way out. But we got that rod in so that this is open underneath there. And well, that came out pretty easy. <clears throat> so that drops down. We'll just push it out with our little punch here, okay? And we're just gonna go ahead and we're gonna put the bolt back in it. And then we're gonna rotate this thing around to this side here. And we're gonna do the same thing. That one wasn't as tight. Okay, and get just a, actually, you know, you can, they're half inch, 13, so you could just put one of your studs in there. Okay. Now that section can just be set off to the side. And we mash marked it so we know which way it goes back in there. Okay, so now what we have is our rod ends our connecting rods that tighten the bottom half and the top half together and hold the cylinder inside and there's a, probably an o-ring underneath here and an o-ring underneath here and then the rest of it is rod seals and uh, there's a rod seal and wiper assembly here and over here so this plate right here will probably come off with the rods when I undo the the nuts on the top here. Okay, I'm gonna go get an impact. Okay, we went and found our impact, and uh, not not because of these are hard. We're not working with a vice here or anything else. So we're just gonna go ahead and. Yeah, it works better the other off. The nuts are bronze, and the the uh, rods are stainless steel. Of course, when we go to put this back on, we're not going to be using the, the torque wrench. I just wanted that so that it wasn't taking forever to unscrew those. Sometimes they have, and they're not too bad. They're pretty clean, but there's a little bit of greenness on there, meaning just a little bit of corrosion. Uh, from, from age. All right. Now, now we want to go ahead and use our plastic mallet. We can lightly tap those rods and this is starting to separate here. So this should pull off now like that. Okay. And that assembly there, we'll just set that on out of the way. We can set our items up here afterwards. Just gives us more working room here. Okay, 
so we got one end here and then a rod or a, a tube and another rod end over here or cap all right so we got an o-ring that seals the bore and then we have a wiper and we have another seal in there we got to take a scribe and we got to pop those out we pop those out and then we're going to tag them and then we're going to look up in the book and we're going to locate those seals if they're uh, local in McMaster car then we can get them within a day and if they're down in Florida uh, we get uh, shipping up here within a couple days all right now I'm going to go ahead and unscrew our rod end off of here all right there's our barrel it looks good it's not scored really nice and glossy in there looks good and our piston here looks really nice too it's an o-ring and uh and then you have a, a a split pressure ring on either side of there and we'll be able to we'll be able to locate those as well and it's roll pinned with two roll pins to the shaft and we'll find out if those are uh, individual or <clears throat> or if that's all one piece there we'll get an overall length of the the shaft here and get a piece ordered as well all right so I got a I got this nut here that's a little bit tighter than my grip so we're gonna put this in the <clears throat> three jaw in the little lathe and just put the wrench on here and pull that off this this nut had Loctite underneath so it it was a little tough I but clamping down on the three jaw you, you can you know if you're really we won't worry about saving this piece we're replacing this and but I didn't do any damage on here anyway but if you wanted to you could get a piece of uh, aluminum uh, flashing something like that to go around uh, on your jaw so that you can even protect it farther than that or like the aluminum ones that I have for the four jaw over here on the cane I mean the uh, closing so anyway I got this so I'm, we're pulling this block off okay that's what that scar area sounds like going through this end of the, the cylinder sweet huh okay and we'll get a close-up picture of this here I'm just gonna look in here and uh, yeah it's not real pretty you know you can really see what it does to the guide or the bore behind those seals and of course the seals are rubber and they can flex a little bit but they are only going to handle so much and then you can start seeing that you can actually see just a little bit of tearing going on with those see how that right in line where those two grooves are going through the main housing there you can really see that they are taking a little bit of abuse so there's no way that you would actually stop this thing from actually dripping and they're, they've lost their flexibility as well this thing's no spring chicken all right so we're going to get a scribe and we're going to pull a few of these things out but i bet you i can probably get all of these things through McMaster car right there in new jersey okay these outside o-rings those nice we can measure the bore and we measure up the 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 width of the o-ring and uh the root of this here and we, we can pretty well figure out what size o-rings we want and figure out the number of those through the book and uh okay we're going to pull out the wiper now the wipers on the outside we can go find the wiper
Uh, main thing on the wiper is the cross section here, the rod diameter, and the OD. And of course you have a couple different uh, materials that you can choose for that as well. Um, we're not really working with any high-tech fluids, so we're not going to be vulnerable to you know anything oddball there in this situation. Some of the things well, in the yards there we used uh, in the old days, there was cellulose and there was a couple other things that, you know, they're, they're not too kind to your body either when you get, get that stuff on you. Okay, we've got another split backup ring there and a big fat O-ring in there for seal. So it's an easy rod seal. I'm going to wipe this off of here. These O-rings here I might actually have in my O-ring kit. They're a common size. I don't have my calipers on me. All right, and the backup ring. Make sure we get new ones of those. They actually feel, feel like um, Delrin or nylon. They're pretty, they're, they might be like Teflon. They're Delrin, Teflon, you know, they, they've got that feel, that soap feel. All right, so each of these are probably pretty close. They're they're identical. So we got a sample of those seals and wipers right there, and the outside cap. And we know that these are going to be times two. And now we got uh, the piston seal. And there's one wiper there, or backup ring, I should say, and an O-ring. That might also be right in our O-ring kit and our other backup ring here. Now that piece is solid there, so we just got to tap out those spring pins. And then that should come off, and then that gives us an overall length. And we have a diameter. This is a three-quarter inch shaft here. And then we'll just have to put these threads on one end. And we can probably get a three-foot piece out of uh, McMaster Car, or our local yard comes down on Thursday, so we may call tomorrow and uh, have it delivered on Thursday. All right, as promised, I wanted to talk a little bit about my Iron Rose three-dimensional cutout. And while I'm talking, I'm going to go ahead and show you some pictures of the progress of making these. First we uh, we cut them out on the uh, plasma table and they're flat. We bring the cutouts over here and we knock some dross off by the uh, uh, putty knife and uh, wire wheel. After that we take our our Scotch-Brite and create the right finish um, for for each side. And after that then we take them into the mill area and we set up on our mill table a bending a jig and hold them with protective material around our our object and we hand bend these into shape after they are bent into shape then the ones that we want to leave silver we just leave in here and the ones that uh, we want to bronze we put in the oven and we bronze those to the right color and then after that, they all come in here to the, the weld table and then I take the, uh, the hand torch and I blew this, the stem of the rose itself. And then from there, the hand paint job uh, gets done on the, on the buds. So that's kind of the glimpse of it. I do have a box that I ship them out in, a two day priority. I can still get them to you for Mother's Day uh, if you order up uh, today and tomorrow. And, um, hey, uh, here's a glimpse of them set up with the green screen rotating so that you can see them close up, uh, 360 degree revolutions, the red and the yellow and the Sonia. Um, the Sonia is actually, it's not really a pink and it's not really a purple. 
it's kind of a mixture there and that's what the Sonia Rose is and I hand mix the paint to come up with as close to that color as possible and uh, the yellow is pretty vibrant and the reds as average red that that I can find and uh, my emails in on my website as well these are on the arts and placard uh, or placard and art uh, work uh, page on my website I'll put a link in the uh, uh, description down below and on there is my email if you want to custom order a certain color rose um, in bronze or the silver to your liking I will custom make you a rose um, it, it it will be just put into my regular workload and uh, it's not something that will happen like that but uh, I'll be on a regular basis making several of these and and then they'll be stored in boxes so that I have an inventory for special days it doesn't necessarily need to be Mother's Day uh, or Valentine's Day or a birthday uh, or an anniversary it could be just a special day all right here's a glimpse of the green screen and until the next time get her done <laughs>